at no point did I hear them say, stop, you're under arrest, nothing. They just ran and tackled her. And then that's when I came over and started videoing. At no point did I see them search her until the paddy wagon got here. And at that, there was no female officer present. So this lane here with the red box, I was sitting there waiting on prescriptions for my children. We're at the Walgreens on 39th and Broadway in Kansas City, Missouri. I'm sitting in this lane and I look over here. And a police, a KCMO police um, cruiser pulls up right here where that fire uh, is. thing is. It's whatever. Hydra. Two white male police officers run over here in front of this building and a little bit past and tackle this black one. She was heading north. She was walking down this sidewalk. And they pull up. They did not say, stop. You're under arrest. They didn't yell anything to this woman. They just tackled her. I immediately get out and run over to this fence right here. And you can see that there's a hole there where people go through. So I went through, turned on my camera. And if you want to proceed over there. Well, I was trying to figure out where was this, where was the hole next? I saw something. There's an opening right here in the fence. And I just slipped through and sat over there on the wall and recorded. Where was she at when we slammed her on the ground? I mean, on the, on the, when she tried when, to get a walk When away. she first got tackled? No, when she got her trying to walk away. And they... She was over here. Where this uh where the steps go into this yeah, abandoned building. You can follow me. I came through here. They were right there, filming right here. And they were in this uh in front of these stairs right here. And all of a sudden one of the officers freaks out, grabs her by the neck, and slams her on these stairs. Her neck connected with the corner of one of these stairs. Was this building empty at the time? Yeah, it's... They slammed her by her neck from here. Well, she was facing this way. Here, and her neck caught this right here. Nick caught that stair, and he stayed on top of her and was working her wrist. And in the video, you can hear her screaming that he's going to break her wrist. And I witnessed that. I came around here and decided to film here. And one of the officers said that he was, I, he was going to arrest me. The other officer that was on top of the woman, um, said that I could, I could film, but I just had to stand back. So the other officer then decided to block my view by standing here while he was on top of the woman here, working her wrist and everything like that. So then I come out in the street to get a better view and I'm here, and the officer tells me to get out of the street. So then I proceed over here to film. Well, it's called, uh, it's called, it's called, it's called, it's called. And I'm filming from this direction. I even put the camera through there so that I could get a better view. And um, proceeded to film the rest. This is where she got the helmet. Her breasts were out on the stairs. I asked if they could cover them with a blanket. They would not. Um, and told me that I was hindering. And if I kept talking, I would be arrested. Um, then a paddy wagon pulls up over here by this car and brings the helmet out and puts the helmet on her. They shackle her. They hold her arms up like this. 
and make her walk all the way to the paddy wagon where there's where she is frisked by a male officer and then put in the paddy wagon and arrested and not once did i hear why she was being arrested were there any no rights were were read were there any female officers present? No, not one. And they had a bent over more like this here where yep. her arms were. Her arm, she was bent over like this, and they were forcing her to walk in shackles. And you could clearly tell that she was in pain. You just take about 12 inch step, uh, 12 inch steps with shackles on. Yes. So, that, so she, she was cuffed at the, at the wrist and at the ankles. Correct, and she had some kind of helmet on. They put some spit kind of- spit here, a spitter's mass some kind of red helmet, which... You might need to get a, 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 a distance shot back in this area here so you get everything on there. Okay, and what is this address here? This address is 3816 and 3814. Uh, is this a ball? <laughs> 3814 so 30, and 3814 Central. 3814 Central. Yes. And the incident occurred right here on these steps. This house vacant. Yes. This this building's been vacant for years. It's been vacant they, for years. They fixed it up recently, but it's been vacant for years. So it's. They've also cut down bushes here because I think people used to kind of stay right there where that tree is on the other side of the fence. Uh, there was several bushes there, and people used to stay there because it was warm and you know, kind of secluded. Okay, so we don't know what realty company is selling this this piece of property. I don't even know that it is for sale. Was she coming out of the building when the police stopped her? Um, I'm not sure if she was coming out of the building or if she was just walking down the sidewalk. Yeah. I know what they're going to try to say. I, I think she was just walking down the sidewalk. But I'm not, I'm not completely sure. All I know is that when she got to about this driveway that we're standing in, when she got to this driveway, that's when she got tackled. And that's when um, I got out of the car and came over here and started filming. And your car was over there at the pharmacy? Yes, in the uh, driveway, drive through closest to us. And so there's... So I can clearly see from there to here her get tackled. That's when I run over, come through there, and just kind of quietly sat on the wall and filmed until I saw them grab her by her neck and slam her on those stairs. And she didn't do anything wrong. She wasn't resisting. She was sitting down, but then got up and just kind of took a few steps. She was clearly upset and who wouldn't be when you get tackled by, you know, a man on the street for no reason. And it doesn't matter that he's a police officer or not. She was tackled and nothing was said like stop, you're under arrest. She, there was no warning. She was just attacked, basically. And the Walgreen here is 39th and Broadway. Yes. Between Broadway and Central. Yes. And this is Central. And can you say anything about gentrification in Midtown? Uh, yes, well obviously this building, um, this building was in bad shape uh, years ago. Uh, I know like two years ago, there, the windows were boarded up. Um, it, it was just a really, really kind of run down building. What did it look like at, when, it, when this incident happened? It looked like much, pretty much like this here? Uh, no, um, the windows might have been the siding might have been done, but I'm not exactly sure about the windows. Yeah, it looks like they're doing, been doing work on it. We've checked on it. So yeah, I'm pretty sure this building is, is trying, they're trying to gentrify this entire area and this being one of them. Shift it off. I asked them to uh, give her a blanket 
I informed them that her breasts were hanging out. Um, I feel that she was being violated um, and humiliated after being attacked uh, by these men. And um, they would not give her a blanket and told me that if I uh, continued to talk that I'd be arrested for hindering, basically. Um, but at no point did I see them search her. Uh, the only point I saw them search her was when she got to the paddy wagon. Then they start pulling things off of her, I guess. I don't know. I couldn't see. They were blocking my shot, and I think they were doing it intentionally. Um, but then I, they start filling up a bag, a paper bag. I find that very odd that uh, there was no female officer here present just because of the mere fact that she was exposed. They got a policy to see And they were searching. Allows them to do that. I think it probably needs to be challenged because they got male guards searching female guards in prison now. Mm -hmm. They're telling them we don't need no, have no female. And they got females searching males. Mm -hmm. And these, these spit helmets, how long have you known about the, the spit helmets they with the... I, they've had, I've always known them have masks, but they've had these uh, helmets around. I don't know when they got them, when the KCPD got them, but they've been around for, they use them in prison like, a lot of times like they uh, they uh, have to do a cell extraction or something. And uh, guys, they, they got iron bitches they chain, they, they chain you to. And some of guys beat their head on the walls and all that type of stuff. So they put these helmets on them and the spit guards to keep them from spitting on them and beating their head up against the wall and stuff. And uh, I don't know why that was necessary in that case. I watched the video. I didn't see the woman trying it to wasn't herself. necessary. And as a matter of fact, this is the first time I had ever seen anything like that. I didn't know what that that helmet was. I didn't know what it was for um, until I was informed um, by my friend here. Um, so I, I I had never seen that before, and I didn't see any warrant for them to actually use that. She was not biting, she was not spitting. Yeah, she was talking, she was mad. She was being uh, attacked, violated, humiliated, and arrested. And there, at no point did I hear or uh, see them tell her why she was being arrested and I did not hear any rights read. But before they put her in that paddy wagon. I would think if they needed to cover up something, it should have been arrested. That, that seemed to be more urgent than, you know, the spit helmet. Uh, that, that's what I was thinking. And I did ask for the blanket before the helmet was uh, put on her. Before the paddy wagon even showed up, I asked for a blanket. And did we find out her name or her attorney? I watched the video. Uh, she says her attorney is Rob Robertson or Rob Roberts. What we're trying to do is check the police logs and see if we're, we're going to have to do some more digging on that because um, we didn't have any luck when we looked up the name. Um, but I'm pretty sure that if this was a legit arrest, it's public information. So I'm hoping that uh, we have some people from the ACLU working on this. Um, I'm hoping that they can help us come up with that information. How, how complicated is it? We can't just go online and find the arrest. We have to go to the police station and get a request. We should be able to get it offline. We should be able to get it offline. Um, I, I really don't want to go to the police station and ask them for anything due to the fact that I'll make myself known and then public record or anybody should be able to right I, I don't want to put a target on my back so we're going to find this information but we're going to try our hardest not to get it directly from the police department it should be something in, on, on, online about the date on the date that the police made arrest if it's a legitimate arrest yes it should be public knowledge uh, when I first uh, got out of prison uh, about 10 years ago, and uh, I was staying with my relatives and stuff, but you know, things was kind of going kind of bad. And I decided one day, I said, man, I, ain't, I don't even feel like I'm gonna go somewhere else to spend the night. I ain't had nowhere to go. I went in this vacant building. <clears throat> I was gonna try to sleep in there. Somebody saw me going, they called the police and stuff. I got up, I looked out the window, and I seen them 
seen him out, outside. He was waiting on me to come outside. I didn't come out. <clears throat> so then I seen some more police cars pull up. They got out their cars, and I seen them uh, strapping their horses. They was walking toward the building. I said, man, I got to get up out of here and get down there before they uh, get to me. So, uh, man, I uh, uh, I seen them coming in. They climbed in the window. I seen the lights on the wall. So uh, I hollered at them. I said, man, hold up. I said, I'm coming out, man. They said, KCPD, get on the ground. So I got on the ground and stuff. They come in there. And they took me out. That's the first thing. They, they start searching me and everything. Did the same thing. They ain't slam me down because I was already on the ground. They said, you was in there smoking some dope, ain't you? I said, no, nah. and see, a lot of these builders is catching on fire and stuff. These guys being there smoking dope. Some of them is just homeless. They're trying to stay warm. Mm -hmm. And they in there starting fires in the buildings and stuff. And, and uh, uh, so, you know, the guy, they, they told me, they said, look, man, I told myself, man, I was just looking for somewhere to sleep at. I said, man, I'm homeless, man. I was looking for somewhere to sleep at tonight. So, uh, the guy said, well, we're going to call the owner of the building. If he don't want to prosecute you, we're going to let you go. But they had one of them things on the door, on mm -hmm. the, on the, Board, you know, the little white things they put, I mean, on the whiteboard where they say hazardous building, do not enter. Mm -hmm. say, and they looked aside, they said, Oh, we ain't got to call him and say, If you went in there and you had one of them on the door, say, We got to take you to jail. They took me down and I got out the next the next day. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, uh, one of those notices. Um, condemned? Condemned notice, yeah. But obviously, this place is being gentrified here 